Hello, Mr. Johnson here, and we are talking about the Artist Gallery with a brand new episode on today's artist, Damien Hurst. Uh, he is so cool. I cannot wait for you to learn about this guy. So if you are in my class, if you're one of my students, uh, you should take out the Damien Hurst images from your Artist Images Pack, cut out those pictures, paste them into your sketchbook, and then add the notes that appear in these white boxes up on the screen. So while you're doing that, tell you a little bit about him, but then we're going to really dive in. I hope that you are as uh, intrigued by his artwork as I am. So here's our information. Damien Hurst is a conceptual artist. So that means that his artwork is about an idea more than it is about the technical craft of creating art. So uh, instead of, you know, really drawing or painting with his art, he is coming up with a concept and then figuring out how he can relay that concept to the viewer. So his artwork is very different from things that we've looked at before, but really exciting. So that's, uh, you know, his style of conceptual art. He was born on June 7th. I don't know if anyone else is a birthday buddy with Damien Hurst. If you have a June 7th birthday, uh, in 1965 in Bristol, uh, England, in the United Kingdom. And he currently is the UK's richest living artist. So Damien Hurst is a current contemporary artist. He's working right now. He has solo shows all around the world. And he is definitely uh, England's richest living artist and probably their most famous artist as well. Uh, the 1990s, he exploded in the British art scene. And that's when he really made a name for himself internationally with this type of art. Um, he moved to London uh, when he was young, where he worked in construction before studying for his uh, degree in fine art at Goldsmiths College. Uh, and since the late 1980s, he's... Uh, practiced installation, sculpture, painting, drawing, uh, and he's exploring the relationship between art, life, and death. That's what most of his artwork is about, art, life, and death. And he says, quote, art is about life and it can't really be about anything else. There isn't anything else. So I'm really excited for you to check out some of this artwork. He developed an interest in exploring the unacceptable idea of death when he was a teenager. Uh, from the age of 16, he made regular visits to the anatomy department of Leeds Medical School, where he would make uh, drawings using the, you know, uh, cadavers and the uh, dead bodies, um, which it kind of gave him this start in this appreciation for questions about life and death, which I think is really, really cool. So let's take a look at some of these artworks, shall we? And we'll see what, uh, what you think about them. This is probably his most famous, most iconic artwork. This is called The Physical Impossibility of Death in the Mind of Someone Living. Uh, and when you're looking at this, uh, this is created in 1991, uh, and it is a tiger shark. And you might be asking, well, what are we looking at? So this is a photograph of his installation sculpture. So he has these large boxes. These are white framed boxes uh, with glass. And inside the box is a tiger shark. It's a, a real shark. The shark is dead and it is suspended in a formaldehyde solution. Now formaldehyde is what we use to preserve dead bodies. So it is a real shark just floating in this formaldehyde. You can walk around and take a look at the dead shark. Um, this type of art, again, uh, commenting on life and death is something that uh, people really responded to in very different ways. It was quite controversial. Some people thought this was an incredible concept. Other people were you know, afraid of it, um, didn't like it, but it was notable, right? It was something that um, was uh, unveiled in the exhibition. The shark described by the artist as something to describe a feeling remains one of the most iconic symbols of modern British art and pop culture from the 90s. Um, through preserving creatures in this glass tank filled with formaldehyde, 
Damien Hirst intended to create a zoo of dead animals. So let me know what you think about artwork like this. Now, here's something entirely and completely different. Um, these are series of spot paintings. Now, this is a photograph. Uh, this is the artist Damien Hirst standing in front of his spot paintings. So uh, these are, you know, the paintings on the wall. These are very large, painted in 1992. He created an entire series of these huge spot paintings that were, uh, you know, hand-painted of individual colors. These were made by dozens of assistants. So he would choose colors and the size of the dots. And then, uh, you know, lots of people would help paint them in to form this grid pattern. Um, he wanted these to be about the joy of color and just enjoying color. I think they're really cool. Um, they, uh, this is one of his most famous series of artworks. This is just one of them, but there are many, many paintings in this series. Again, the grand scale of them being so large, 10, 12, 15 feet in size, um, kind of envelops you in these dots of color, which I think is pretty cool. It also reminds me of the dots candy, right? The little color dot. I think that's kind of cool too. Um, so let's learn here a little bit more about Damien Hirst in one of his exhibitions. Let's take a walk through, shall we? Some dot paintings, they're all totally Hello, different. Welcome to an event everybody's been waiting for in London this year, the Damien Hirst exhibition. Now, you may think you know a lot about Damien Hirst, because let's face it, he's hardly ever out of the news. But reading about him in newspapers, hearing about him in the gossip columns, uh, seeing pictures of him in the lifestyle magazines, isn't the same thing as seeing his work. And the really good thing about this show is after all the fuss, all the hype, at last we're able to see Damien Hirst's work properly and to evaluate him as an artist properly. And all I can say is, it's about time. the physical impossibility of death in the mind of someone living. Otherwise known as Damien Hirst's shark. His most famous piece, made in 1991 and still rather gripping, don't you think, 20 years later. The first spot paintings. This is abstraction boiled down to its most basic units. The dot, the spot, the blob of colour. What's great, though, is how pretty they are. This piece is called Crematorium. It's about death, and if you look inside it, you'll see why. The show contains most of Damien Hirst's best-known masterpieces, and I was particularly pleased to see this in the exhibition. It's called Mother and Calf Divided, and I first saw this at the Venice Biennale in the early 1990s when this whole idea of being able to walk right through the middle of a dead cow struck me as very exciting and it's still a thrill today. Although I remember when it was shown in Venice at that Biennale, the Pope really didn't approve of it. The this stuff is so cool, it's so round weird. And round they go with their beautiful patterns. Black sheep, black sun, made entirely of flies. And one of the things you'll see in this exhibition is his diamond skull, which infamously cost 50 million pounds, and which is basically a platinum skull covered with the most gorgeous diamonds. And I suppose the world is divided into those who really love to see that many diamonds and those who rather resent the spectacle. Me, I love them. So that's Damien Hirst at Tate Modern in this big year, Olympic year in Britain. Now, I think if I had to give him a mark, it would be eight out of 10. Uh, what he's good at is being exciting, uh, lots of great works in it, uh, lots of pieces we haven't seen before, Fantastic designer, I think that comes across over and over again. On the bad side, 
perhaps there are too many spot paintings and some parts of the show feel a little bit repetitive. But hey, eight out of 10 in Olympic year, that's a great score. Isn't that cool? So you really get a sense for what it's like looking at Damien Hirst's artwork and walking through one of those exhibitions, um, I think is really cool. Uh, this is one you do not have to include if you're in my class, you don't have a copy of this. This is called The Dream, created in 2008. And again, it is a dead animal suspended in a cage of formaldehyde, but he has created a unicorn. So this is a foal with a horn, um, you know, a young, uh, young child horse. Uh, that had died and he preserves it and he added a horn to create a unicorn that you can walk around and see. So I think that's very different, kind of cool. I don't know what you think about it. Um, if you're a big animal advocate, you may not be such a fan of Damien Hirst, um, but maybe you'd be a fan of this. Um, this is a sculpture called For the Love of God created in 2007. And it is a skull that is covered in 8,601 individual diamonds. I think that's cool. So what I love about this piece of artwork is that it combines two incredibly different things. What a juxtaposition here of a, of a human skull, which we know, hey, that's death and decay, and then diamonds, something that is you know, um, extravagant and luxurious and high class and, and costly. So to combine those two things together, diamonds, which we'd love looking at and skulls, which, you know, kind of creep us out to create something new that is a combination of those things. So, so, so cool. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit more about this one. There's a great video here that talks about this piece in particular. So I'll play this for you. And it's, oh, it's so cool. So let's learn a little bit more about For the Love of God by Damien Hirst. This is quick, it's only like three minutes. I used oh, to read that's... a comic book at school called 2000 AD and it had a character in it called Tharg who had a kind of mind stone in his forehead. He was a powerful godlike figure who controlled the universe. When I came along and started making art, I was like, I wanted to change the world. Every artwork that's ever interested me is about death. thought what's the maximum you could pit against death and then you know diamonds came to my mind. I uh, ended up approaching Bentley and Skinner to make it for me and they have uh, an appointment to the Queen. Wow. So it's all, is it kind of held together? Oh, I see. It is, but it's just pins and glued, so be careful. So don't go straight around. I love it. I got the skull from uh, a shop called Get Stuffed in uh, Islington. It was quite hard to find a skull that actually just said, I'm a skull, not said anything else. Because we're dealing with death, which is so negative, it has to be totally positive and you can't cut corners and it's just got to be, you know, ridiculous in its, um, in its perfection. We took the original skull, removed the teeth, had the teeth cleaned up by a dentist and cast the whole skull in platinum. The idea of titling it For the Love of God came from my mother who used to say that whenever I had crazy ideas. For the love of God, what are you going to do next? But I had no idea really what it would look like or how it would be perceived and I had a big fear that it was going to end up like, you know, some sort of tacky piece of jewellery. but it has a kind of quietness and a kind of sort of transcendent feel to it. You know, it's sort of mesmerizing and optimistic. That's the really shocking thing for me because it's like such a sort of negative subject that I really thought it would be dark, but it isn't at all. to be ultimate perfection. When I actually saw it when it was finished, I just thought, 
Wow. Isn't that cool? Um, I hope you enjoy that. His stuff is so neat. It's so bizarre and different. Um, it's cool to kind of get to see the the inside, you know, peek a little bit. So here's another one you do not have. Um, this is called Some Comfort Gained from the Inherent Lies in Everything. And uh, once again, these are, you know, dead animals. He doesn't kill the animals. They're already dead. Um, just if that makes a difference. And they're suspended in, again, glass cases of formaldehyde. But this time... Oh, it's a it's a couple of cows and he's sliced them into sections and each section is in a different glass uh, glass case. So you can actually walk here through the cows because they are cut vertically and then separated in different boxes. So, you know, here this is just the inside slice of a cow. Um, so it's kind of gross. It's also kind of fascinating, uh, which I think is part of the point, right, of Damien Hirst's art. Kind of, it freaks me out, but it's also, like, I can't stop looking at it. Um, I, again, here's something that you don't have, but just another example, the different types of work that Damien Hirst uh, creates. This is called Love Will Tear Us Apart from 2007, um, and it's part of a drug dispense, dispensary a dispensary, but that's not a word, uh, you know, uh, dispensary here for uh, needles. So Damien Hirst's art, like I said in the beginning, is all about art, life, and death, and different ways that that people die and, and issues, you know, affecting humanity, and one of those is drugs. He has artwork about smoking. We saw in that video that a huge um, the cigarette thing, uh, you know, made a giant version filled with, you know, cigarettes to talk about how they kill, you know, people. And uh, again, this is a, a, a medicinal cabinet here for dispensing drugs. Um, and this was sold for $16,250, mm, right? We must be doing something wrong. Um, here again, one you do not have, St. Sebastian Exquisite Pain. Created in 2007, this is an ox uh, filled with arrows. So this is a religious artwork. And you may think, well, this is, a, again, a dead animal with a bunch of arrows in it suspended in a glass case of formaldehyde. How is this religious? Well, this is um, an allegory for St. Sebastian. So St. Sebastian um, is a biblical figure, you know, who was shot through with arrows. And so here Damien Hirst is alluding to that figure with his ox in the formaldehyde and all of those arrows, the same way that St. Sebastian, you know, uh, had died. So very interesting. So for our journal prompt for my classes, I want you to tell me what are your feelings about Damien Hirst's artwork? Do you like it? Why or why not? We keep it simple this week because his work is very different than anything else that we have seen or talked about this year. So let me know, what do you think about this? The skulls embedded with diamonds or the shark suspended in a tank of formaldehyde. Uh, let me know what you think. Again, post your photo of your artist gallery page to the gallery assignment on Google Classroom, and in the text box, answer this question. What are your feelings about Damien Hirst's artwork? Do you like it? Why or why not?